Coming up on today's show, we'll meet the developers at Lotus F1 team as they transform their current travel application from a static and standalone itinerary system optimized for paper printouts to an Office 365 integrated dynamic and mobile app experience on the team's phones and email. And we'll hear from members of the race team as they return from the Hungarian Grand Prix. critical aspects of Formula One is getting the crew to the race location. At Lotus F1 team, with one in five of their staff on the go and living in email, demand for better integration across email, mobile, and calendar is strong compared to the paper-based solution used today. And I know you, you're actually manually entering these into your calendar inside of Outlook, right? Exactly, yes. Yeah. Some people, to, you know, individuals will take the time to, to put those things into their calendar so it pops up on their laptop or their phone. Uh, and warns them when, when things are, but there's not, at the moment we have nothing automated for that. The travel office equally wanted a better way of managing and communicating itinerary changes to affected individuals and keeping personnel details up to date. It is hard to make changes to the itinerary. It's all done in Word and we have to do it manually and then we publish it on the internet. It's quite painful at the moment um, to keep on top of everyone's personal details. We have to track them down to keep their um, addresses, their passports, their visas all up to date. Knowing there was a better path forward using office extensibility, I caught up with Mark Everest from IT to see how he was looking to solve the problem. So Mark, we heard the pain points from Joanna and Alan. Surely there's got to be a better way. Well, it turns out there is. And what we decided to do was to build a brand new application from scratch. So firstly, we wanted to integrate with people's emails and calendars because they're tools that everyone's familiar with now. We wanted to move away from the paper-based team view and create a more personalized, dynamic view that would be up to date at all, all times. And also, we wanted to be able to support different devices and mobile platforms. And where do you start? Well, the current application is a uh, VB6 application that we don't have the code for, and it uses an Access 2003 database at the back end. It enforces nine hard-coded steps for traveling to events that don't always fit the model that we want to use. Mm -hmm. There's no Active Directory integration, so everything has to be manually entered, and the result is a paper-based document that we either email or print out to give to people. So not very ideal in terms of dynamically uh, planning for events, but where did you get started with the new app? So for the new application, we decided to integrate with Office 365 because it gives us access to emails and calendars. Using calendars means that we don't have problems with appointments across time zones because that's all worked out for us. And what Office 365 is doing is it's, it's creating a bridge between our applications and the Azure Active Directory. Now you mentioned the nine hard-coded steps. Did you have to change the database schema in the new app in order to accommodate a more free way of planning events. Absolutely, and it's a good, good opportunity to do that because we can modernize and make it more future-proof as well. So we also decided to store the data in Azure, which would allow us to use the central database access model that we want to for the application. And you've built a few apps to accomplish this, right? Yes, we did. So there's a user interface for the travel team to enter all the details, and then there's an application for the travel team to use on the go. And we also created an Outlook add-in. Tell me about security and the model you took there. So we use Active Directory on-premise now for most of our applications, so we wanted to continue using that model. All the users are defined in Office 365, and they have to be to get access to our application. And the good thing about that is if somebody leaves the team and we deactivate their account, then they no longer have access to the application, even if they've installed it on personal devices. Azure AD allows us to create granular controllers to what our application can access in the AD. So for example, the application can access my calendar, but it can't read my email. OK, so how was the app actually built? So we started off by creating a web application. Let me show you. OK. So we have a single page app that's hosted out of an MVC application. And we use Angular and Angular Root to provide a rich AJAX interface for the users. And what that means is that when you click on a link or you click on something in the application, you don't have to wait for the whole page to refresh before you, you see anything. So individual bits of HTML are dynamically loaded. And that makes it a lot more fluid. Absolutely, yeah. And it was very easy to create database objects. So we've got our database model here that we've created. Um, and because this was a database project inside Visual Studio, when we publish it to Azure, it automatically runs all the scripts for us. So the, the kinds of things we've had to do, for example, you can see here, we've, uh, we've made it so we have start and end time zones to get around the issues that we had with the previous application. Okay, and how hard was it to add Office 365 capabilities to this app? 
It was very simple, in fact. So there's, a, there's an option to do this. So you right click and you choose to add connected service. And there's a few options there. So you choose the Office 365 APIs. And then you just follow this wizard. So you have to have a, an Office 365 developer account already. Um, but you just fill the details in here. And from that, you can access calendar, contacts, mail, as well as your uh, um, OneDrive for Business files. Now, ultimately, this is running somewhere on a server. But where do you actually publish everything? So everything has been published into Azure. Um, we have uh, the, the web application here, as well as the database. OK. The good thing about web applications on, uh, on Azure is that they, you automatically get HTTP, so you get SSL for free. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about registering a certificate and having all of those issues. The one tip I'd advise is to always change the name of an application that the users are going to remember, because that's important. That's part of the URL. OK, so that's all the plumbing for the app. But can we actually see it running? Yeah, sure. So as I'm an administrator, I get the cog in the top right hand corner, which means I can administer events. And here you can see all the events that have been entered, as well as the users in the system. So I can easily add a new user. So this is looked up in our Azure AD to put in the user details, which are now added to the system. So if we look at a particular event, you can see one that's defined here. And now we're not restricted to the nine stages that we had previously. So we've got a standard event here, and I might want to add a new stage. So let's say um, a team dinner. We can also reorder these stages. So I want to have this uh, on one of the evenings. And then I can go and add people into that team dinner. So if I create one here. And you can see here that we've got the choice of using the destination or the original time zone. And then I can drag people in to that team dinner. As you can see, the whole application is very drag and drop. Um, and once I've finished entering all the details, I can publish this. It will send an email to all the users to tell them that the event has been updated. So what happens in terms of, of that versus maybe the old app? Does that get out of date once I've sent that email? It can do, which is why we created an Outlook add-in. So as you can see here, the email's arrived. I've already added the add-in on my machine here. So you could either do it as an individual user, or you could get your Exchange administrator to roll it out to everyone in your company. So just by clicking on the Travel Advisor add-in here, the details of the event are loaded. I can then choose individual items to add those to my calendar. So tell us about mobile support, if I'm using my phone maybe when I'm at the track. OK, so the second part of this project was a mobile application. Mm -hmm. We've created this using HTML5, um, and we've used Cordova as part of Visual Studio 2015, which creates native applications. So although it's HTML5, it compiles native applications for Windows, Android, and iOS. Most of the functionality was at the server level, so we've just ported over the, the key functionality needed for the client application. And because, of course, they're native applications, they also work offline. That's great for saving also data charges that you might have while you're traveling around the world. Yeah. So can we see all this working? Yeah, sure. So I have the application loaded here in an emulator on my PC, so I don't even have to load it to my phone. So I can see the list of events that are coming up. Here's the one that I published earlier. You can see all the details in there. You can see who I'm on the flight with. I can also choose to add individual items to my calendar, or I can select bulk select items and choose to add them all to my calendar in one go. At the bottom of the application, it tells you when it was last updated. And you can use standard phone gestures to get latest updates. And also, the application's been written to handle when you're offline. So you can see when everything goes gray, I'm offline, and it's using a cached version. And again, you can still see the last time that the data was pushed out. So the aspects I like about the app is the ease of making changes and updates. Now the team have access to the app. They can add their own details. Um, we don't have to keep chasing them down. So I've just got back from the Hungarian Grand Prix, and one of the great things was using the new travel app. This has replaced a, a mountain of paperwork for us, and, and now I have everything at my fingertips uh, in an app. Uh, and the best thing about it is it's personalized to me. That I don't have to trawl through lists of uh, names and flight details and stuff. It, it, it's all there. For example, I can click on my outbound flights, but one swipe, and I can add it to my calendar. Outlook then gives me a pop-up a day before and tells me when I need to go to the airport. We've just got back from Hungary. We've been using the app for the first time. It's made a lot of efficient changes to the team. Um, whether we're on the network or offline, the information is on the phone for the guys or their uh, tablets, etc. 
It takes a lot of pressure off me in that um, when we're changing events, leave times, uh, adding in meetings, um, we can do that efficiently. The guys, I know the guys have got the information, now it's on the phones. Custom events, if something out of the blue changes that we're really not banking on, we can put that in there as well so the guys are all aware. This completes our visit with the IT team and we've seen quite an impressive transformation along their journey. From a five-day email migration to Office 365, Skype for Business implementation, secure file sharing with OneDrive for Business, interactive data visualization with Power BI, and as we saw today, race team logistics automation using Office 365 extensibility. I'm headed back to Seattle now. Of course, you can watch all the episodes with Lotus F1 team on Office Mechanics. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.